Hello and welcome to my channel Malavika's Magic. Today I'll be sharing with you my views on formulating a hypothesis. So let me take you to the roadmap of my presentation. So first I'll be talking about the concept of hypothesis wherein I will discuss the meaning and purpose. Second, I'll be discussing the types of hypothesis wherein I will explain the different ways of writing a hypothesis. Third, I'll be explaining to you how to formulate a hypothesis and I'll give you examples of strong and weak hypothesis. Let us now move on to the first topic that is the concept of hypothesis. Here I will be discussing the meaning and purpose. So let us begin by understanding the meaning of hypothesis. So when we begin a research, we need to identify a problem. The problem will lead to further investigation. So here I have identified a problem that is of water scarcity. Now after identifying the problem, I have to think about the time period available in order to conduct the investigation. So the time period will determine or will rather narrow down the scope of my research. So here I have thought of a particular area and I have to have a proper study of the area in order to find out a solution to this particular problem. So I have thought of a solution which is rainwater harvesting and this is my idea or this is my solution. Now, based on this idea, I assume that with rainwater harvesting, the problem of water scarcity in XYZ region will be minimized or it will not exist. So, this is my assumption or rather, this is the argument that I'm putting forward. So, hypothesis is an assumption or an argument that the researcher puts forward so that it can help him to conduct his research or to investigate into the problem or to test and measure his assumption and to prove that what he has assumed um, is uh, applicable or is acceptable and it can actually minimize the problem of water scarcity in XYZ region. So having understood the meaning of hypothesis, let us now move on to the purpose of hypothesis. The first purpose of hypothesis is it helps us to find answer to a question. When we have a question in our mind, that is the problem in our mind, uh, we are able to find an answer that is an hypothesis. Second, it helps us to think on the results. It forces us to think on the results. That is, in order to prove the answer to the readers, we need to think about the results. We need to think about the process of conducting the investigation. And so this is what an hypothesis does. Third, it defines the relationship between the two variables. The, by the two variables, I mean the independent variable and the dependent variable. In my previous video, I've already dealt with it. But for uh, in order to uh, help you to recollect what is independent and dependent variable, I will explain to you what it is. Independent variable is the one that the researcher can manipulate. And the dependent variable is the one where the researcher measures that. So the rise or the increase and decrease of the independent variable can have an effect on the dep dependent variable. So the relationship can be determined very clearly when we formulate a hypothesis. Having understood the purpose of hypothesis, let us now move on to the second topic, that is the types of hypothesis. So broadly, there are two types of hypothesis. The first one is the null hypothesis, or it, and it is represented by HO. The second one is the alternative hypothesis, and it is represented as H1 or HA. Now the null hypothesis um, is the one that the statistical significance does not exist in a set of given observation. That is, the statistical significance does not exist between the independent variable and the dependent variable. 
then it is used in quantitative analysis. Third, it, uh, it is used to test theories about markets, investing strategies or economies to decide if an idea is true or false. In an alternative hypothesis, the statistical relationship exists between the variables. It is actually helps to answer a research question and it represents an alternative that can be tested using the test of significance. So having understood the null and the alternative hypothesis, I would say that the null hypothesis is designed in order to reject the hypothesis, whereas an alternative hypothesis is designed in order to accept the hypothesis. So let us understand the concept of null and alternative hypothesis with the help of an example. So here I have an example for you. Light color has no effect on plant growth. That is a null hypothesis. So we see that there is um, the, the statistical significance is not there between the independent variable that is light color and uh, the, plant, the dependent variable plant growth. Now, if we have to uh, accept the hypothesis, we design an alternative hypothesis. That is, light color affects plant growth. So this is an alternative hypothesis. So when I conduct my investigation, I will try and find out to what extent it affects plant growth. And that will be my result. So there are different types of alternative hypothesis in the sense, depending upon the purpose of research, uh, we can design different types of alternative hypothesis. So we have you know, res uh, academic research where we design, where we are very specific about to what extent there will be an effect. So we can say light color has a positive effect on plant growth. So this kind of hypothesis is written for academic research. Then suppose we are comparing two variables or we are comparing uh, uh, two, uh, two aspects. So we we'll have a comparative research. So in comparative research, we can modify this hypothesis further. We can write it in this manner. Plants that have more exposure to light color will have better growth than those with less exposure. So having understood the concept of null and alternative hypothesis, let us now move on to the third topic that is formulating a hypothesis. So here I'll be giving you examples of strong and weak hypothesis. So let us first begin with an example. So here I have this example of a hypothesis. If children drink two glasses of milk per day, they will grow taller than children who do not drink any milk. Now, if we identify the variables, we find that drinking two glasses of milk is an independent variable. And that can be increased and decreased, okay, depending upon, um, you know, like uh, what changes we want to see in the dependent variable, that is the children will grow taller. So we find that, you know, this hypothesis is fairly good because the relationship is determined between the independent variable and the dependent variable. But if we have a closer look, we will identify that this hypothesis needs to be refined it is rather vague. Why? Because we are not specifying for how long um, the children will be observed. So that period is not specified. And so therefore, we can say that this hypothesis will be very difficult to test and measure as we have not specified the period. So we cannot uh, measure the, uh, observe the children for lifetime. So we need a time period in order to be more specific. So therefore, I would say that this is an example of a weak hypothesis. And if I have to refine this hypothesis and make it a strong hypothesis, I will write in this manner. If children drink two glasses of milk per day for a year, they will grow taller than children who do not drink any milk. So I have specified the time period and this time period will help me to carry on with my investigation to help me to measure and test my hypothesis. So this is 
the, an example of a strong hypothesis. So having understood that um, how the hypothesis should be written, let us understand that there are certain rules or the certain uh, steps that need to be followed while formulating a hypothesis. So here I'll be talking about certain points that we ought to remember. The first is when we write a hypothesis, we actually need to write it if, as an if and then statement. So when we write it as an if and then statement, then uh, the relationship that we ought to develop between the independent and the dependent variable is very clear and it becomes easier for us to determine the relationship. Also, we can reflect on the statement and it becomes clear whether it can be measurable or not, whether the scope is narrowed, whether it is, uh, uh, whether we are able to complete the investigation or within the time frame that is given to us. And then secondly, I would say, once the hypothesis is written, we need to reflect on the hypothesis in order to find out whether it can be tested. So if it cannot be tested, then we need to refine a hypothesis. We need to rewrite the hypothesis all over again. Third, we should be clear and specific when we write the hypothesis. And also, hypothesis should be concise and to the point. We should avoid wordiness when we are writing a hypothesis. Fourth, there should be a clarity in relationship between the two variables. As we have seen in the examples that I've stated earlier, there's a, relate, there's a clarity in the relationship between the independent and the dependent variable, and that will help us to move ahead with the investigation. So having understood the ways to formulate a hypothesis, I thank you all for your patient listening. I hope you have uh, understood the concept of formulating a hypothesis in case you have any doubts, you can always put your comment in the comment section. I will definitely answer your queries. Thank you once again.